Okay, uh, Emirhan is going to join if he can um, after we start. So, uh, John is here, Zamre is here, Emirhan may come. Uh, let's start then because today's practice is something very good practice. I, I really like this one. Do you guys have a chance to try this by your own? Nope. Nope. Okay. So uh, this practice is a kind of uh, complete application until a certain point. Of course, there is no purchasing is happening, but there are lots of calculations. There are lots of uh, activities are taking place in here. And if you'll see, uh, th these are the requirements what we are supposed to achieve. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, start building up this application. But uh, in most of the cases, okay, I have something in the chat, let me see. Okay, not finished. Okay, that's good, but at least you tried. Thank you very much, John. So uh, in most of the cases, when you join a company uh, because that company was there before you pick up this pet or before you get that job approved, uh, they will be, actually they were some projects already going on. So what you need to do, you need to adjust your, yourself to, uh, to put your skills in that scenario, in that case, in that situation. So what we have in here, we have a given template. So we are not supposed to think about how to create this template, but we need to use this template uh, effectively. So uh, let's try to find, first of all, what we have. Uh, okay, the CSS styling has been applied and the title has been placed, that's good. We have the body and inside the body we have a div section in here about the movie container. That's this, this part. It says pick up movie. That's the label. And we have select option for this select options uh, area to, to select one of the either of these options. And then we have a showcase. The showcase area is only giving us kind of a uh, label which label means what, and A is uh, not assigned. Uh, so selected is something like this bluish color, and this uh, white color is the occupied seats. And down here, we have another div tag, which is container. And the very first div inside this container is the string. And then we have a couple of rows are coming and for the each row we have number of seats are given in here. And eventually those are here, the rows and seats. Uh, eventually we have the text to uh, write the final decision about how much does it cost. So uh, once we understand which component in HTML represented how, in, in, in the representation level. Uh, we then need to start collecting the inputs and based on the, those collected inputs, we need to put them in action, make the related calculations and manipulate the existing page based on the inputs of the user. So uh, to have that uh, feature, what I can say that, let's try to start with this, um, selector okay but before we go for the selector uh, i would like to build again the uh, the pattern as i used to build so i have this index.html and styles.css which is style.css and those are already present in our um github uh this is in the javascript class notes movie underscore app this is the before, but my code is going to be inside the after. Okay, so uh, whenever I start coding, I will be pushing the code here. So if you guys would like to take the code, it will be available in this page. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to create a new 
file a new folder in here. And in this new folder, I'm going to write the JS. JS as JavaScript. And inside the JavaScript, I'm going to add another file in here. That's going to be um, solution.js. So that solution.js is required to be uh, implemented in here. Okay. I don't know why these are in here. So let me just get the script. SRC. Okay, that's inside the JS folder. And inside the JS folder, solution.js. And here we are. So let me just save. Just check something in very quick. And here what I have. Maybe app before. Okay. Maybe app after. That's good. So uh, let me just start writing our code in here and to verify that this JavaScript code is up and running. Uh, I'm just going to open the console and I'm just going to write it in here, CLG. Um, okay, first. So as we see that the first is coming, so we are uh, ready to go. I personally like to treat the components by using the classes because the classes, okay, Jake sent another message that, okay, he is not able to join to us today. So um, when we have the classes, we are able to manipulate the data as whole and it's giving us a kind of tidy appearance. So therefore, I'm just going to go for that one first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define a class to hold. Uh, the details with what I need to write a complete statement in here. So that's going to be movie for my case. Because we are talking about um, a JSON object, okay? Uh, I just started and ended with the curly braces in here. So in the default, the name of this movie was given as Avengers Endgame. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do, I don't want to spoil up the spellings. So therefore, I'm just going to go to the elements. And from elements, it is in movie counter and here okay so this is the place so what i'm going to do i'm just going to just copy this one because that's the thing on the island and that's all after the name uh what i need to use in here is okay here is the name what i'm going to place after a short while and then i need to know how much does that movie cost? So I'm just going to write in here the cost as uh, $10 in here. And now I know the name of the movie. I know the, uh, the price of it per one seat. And I need to know how many seats do I have? So I'm just going to write in here, number of seats, okay? so. These are default definitions. So when this application started right now, the Avenger Endgame was selected because it's that movie, it's having the price of 10. And right now there is no seat was selected. So the default number of selected seats is zero. And then uh, I'm going to calculate the price. So uh, how I will calculate the price, uh, let's say that uh, calculate. So the calculation of the price is going to be very simple. It's going to return uh, this dot uh, cost times this dot number of seats. Because I just need to multiply I mean, this part. I just need to multiply 
uh, the number of seats by the cost of that movie. So far, whatever I have in here, it's, it's quite enough for me to uh, figure out this statement. So to prove that one, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, write a function to show me that my uh, code in here is enough to go and change this section. So I'm going to write a function. It doesn't supposed to be in a function, uh, but it's eventually going to be turned or modified as a function because uh, I'm going to use it for every action whenever the user interacts with the page. So for now, because it's going to be just a display or a demo, I'm not going to put it in a function. So what I'm going to say that inside the document, please uh, query selector. I'm going to select in here, first of all, number of seats. So the number of seats was labeled as ID count. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to write it here. Oops. ID count. And I'm going to say that the inner uh, text, because we are not putting in here anything uh, based on the HTML structure or HTML uh, tag uh, way. So I'm just going to say inner text, not the HTML. The inner text is going to be uh, movie, oops, movie dot uh, number of seats. And like this one, I'm just going to copy and paste this, this line, let's try to push. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line two, uh, two more times. So this is about the manipulating the, uh, the number of seats. Now I need to manipulate the name of the movie. So the name of the movie was labeled as film in here. So I just copy the, uh, that given ID. And the last one is the price. So the price was given as total. So I just put in here total. So as the name of the film, I'm just going to write in here movie.name. And as the total price, I'm just going to write in here movie.calculate. Okay. So when I save this, as you see that right away, uh, my codes actually started to manipulate the text, which is given in the uh, HTML, uh, according to what was collected. Let's put in a try. I'm just going to change my number of seats in here. Let's say that I have five seats were selected and each seat was going to be $7, let's say. So when I just save this, as you see that right after the save, I'm able to see that you have selected five seats. It's coming from here, number of seats. Uh, for Avengers Endgame, it's coming from the name. And you will pay $35. $35 coming from this calculation. So far, up until this point, do you guys have any questions? Um, I didn't know that you actually can put the function inside of that uh, cl uh, class name. So um, instead of that, are you able to put that calculate uh, function outside of that and then just call it up there? I hope I uh, You mean uh, to, to exclude this calculate function right. uh, inside this object uh, and to use it uh, as an external function. Did I right. understand your question correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can do that. But if we are going to do that, uh, we need to pass in parameters. And those yeah. parameters, what we are going to pass in are already going to come from the movie. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, in my, uh, let's say, approach of solving this question, 
that calculate eventually going to need the cost and the number of seats because that's how we make the calculation. So okay. therefore, instead of putting that calculate as an outside function, I put it inside the object. So uh, when we put the oh. functions inside the object, it's going to be called as a method of that. Method, okay, object. this is what I wanted uh -huh. to ask you. Okay, now it's okay. Okay, makes sense. Okay, is it clear mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to, of course, uh, undo my changes, cost is 10 and number of seats is five. Oh, sorry, zero. So it's back to its original state. So what I need to do now is I need to make this uh, action to be triggered once the selection take place. So uh, we have two selections uh, can trigger change of the uh, price in here. So the first one, is changing the number of seats. The second one is changing the uh, the selecting and moving. So what I'm going to say is uh, I'm going to handle this number of seat calculation later on. Therefore, I'm going to give in here in here a hard coded data. Number of seat is going to be five for always because my intention in here is to handle only one piece of a code at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another constant. That constant is going to handle the change whatever we are changing in here. So let's see what was that uh, piece. Okay, that was, as you see that it's a select option uh, tag and its ID is movie. So I'm just going to copy this one. I'm just going to say um, movie selector, okay? And the movie selector is going to be the document that uh, query selector and inside the query selector, I'm going to select this one, movie. So what I'm going to do is Right after the uh, the movie selector selects something, then I'm going to manipulate the related pieces inside this movie object. So the related pieces based on the selection is going to be the name of the movie as well as the price, okay? So what I'm going to say is whenever this movie selector have a change of the selection, so change of this selection means that right now, Avenger Endgame was selected. If I go and select something else, it's going to be called as status change, okay? So therefore I'm going to add in here an event listener and that event listener is going to look to change in this movie selector. So uh, in here, I'm just going to write a callback function and this callback function is supposed to handle the, the item which was selected. So I'm going to write in here as T uh, or let's say item as uh, the input, uh, let's say parameter. And I'm just going to show you what that item is actually. So when I just save it, now let's observe what will come to the console when I just select another movie. So if I click Joker, so it says that there's an event have take place. And this based on this event, uh, the item in here is, let me just see. So yeah, that's a select movie. Okay, so if you look at it in here, we have different paths, so not this one. Source target, okay, target. So in this target, we have let's go fast. 
Okay, so this is the select movie. Whatever is in here, let me scroll it down a little bit. Okay, so this target. Okay. When I hover on select um, uh, hash movie, see which part is being selected. Okay, when I hover on it, that is the entire uh, item, not just the joker but also it's selecting everything. So as you see that we have four options in here, zero, one, two, three, because in here we have four options, okay? And if you look at this one, we have lots of uh, items in here, okay, parameters in here. And we are going to use some of them in this call, like this inner HTML, sorry, inner text. As you see in here, inner text, it contains the name of movie as well as its price. So what we need to do in here is we need to kind of uh, cut the pieces and take the required part out of here. So how we are going to do that? I'm just going to go step by step so you will have a better understanding. As you remember that, my very first search and click was on the target. So I'm going to say that, show me item.target, okay? So now when I make the change, it is showing me item.target, specifically whatever the options are. So as I said options, because it has something called options, okay? So this options is actually an array because there are more than one option. As you see that, these are the options available in this selector. So what I need to do in here is, I need to know which option was selected. So to understand which option was selected, you see there's another parameter down in here. It says that selected index one. So if I'm going to go and select the last one, start counting the indexes from zero, so zero, one, two, three. I'm expecting to see selected index is going to be three in here. So let's give it a try. I hit this one, I open it. And as you see that selected index is three. So by using these um, parameters, which are already in the default behavior of JavaScript, I'm going to take the piece what I need. So I'm going to say that within the options, go to the item, and inside that item, uh, go to target. And inside that target, please bring me selected index. Okay. So I, I, I'm proceeding step by step. Uh, and I'm going to ask either you have a question or not after a short while. Okay. So I just save it. Let's see what will it bring to us. As I remember that when I click the item, I'm sorry, when it was item only, we were seeing the entire select option uh, tag with its parameters and the default methods inside. When I assigned item and target, I was just seeing select option parts. And when I put in here options, I was even able to see that each option one by one as HTML, um, attributes or HTML nodes. And also I was able to see after the nodes, the selected index. So which item was selected was given in here as well. So let's give a try what we will see. I'm going to click the joker. And as you see that right now, I specified the selection up onto that option. And within this option, I don't need the HTML opening and closing text. So what I need in here is the inner text. So inner text is the plain area, which is starting from the J and ending with this parentheses closing. So I'm going to say that, please bring me inner text. So when I do that, eventually I'm just taking the plain text area of that select option. So do you guys have any question up until this point? 
it looks a little bit cumbersome one in another, but uh, we are just using the default parameters of JavaScript and HTML. Um, all is good, except uh, I am not sure about the item that targets selected index. Why do you use item that target, not just selected index itself in that object? Okay, so the selected index not a standalone property. That selected oh, so it's index. It's like a method, right? So it's inside of that target. That's why you're doing it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. To, to, to reach the selected index, first of all, you need to reach the target. To reach the target, you need to reach the item. So it is a kind of chain. Uh, okay. I mean, we, we are, as human, we observe and are able to uh, conclude something uh, by, let's say, overall view. But for the computers, we need to proceed step by step. Okay. So, whatever the item is, check what the target was in the target, check what is the selected index of the target. Okay. Okay. Any more question? I'm just checking the chat. Okay. So in here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split this text, actually split this, um, this given text into two parts, okay, based on uh, whatever this uh, pattern is. So as you see that the name of the movie is coming, then there's a space and there's an opening parenthesis. So I'm just going to split the existing uh, string into two parts. So because I'm going to split them into two parts, uh, what comes in here is going to be the name of the movie and the rest of the content. So let me just show you that as well. I'm just going to say that at the inner, X, inner TXT, uh, split, and this split is going to take place based on, come on. This split is going to be based on space and opening parentheses. So when I just save it and let's try. So when I just select something in here, I now have an array of two items. The first item is the name of the movie. Other half is something which is uh, just to display the price, but I'm not going to use that one to get the price from. So I'm just going to select something else, let's say Avengers Endgame. So as you see that the Avengers Endgame is the name of the movie, and it's the first index, sorry, first item of the array. And there's a kind of um, tail section which I'm not interested in here. So uh, because what I'm interested in here is the very first item of the array, I'm going to say that after you split, just bring me the very first one, okay? Whatever that first one is, just bring me that one, okay? So when I do this, uh, for sure, I'm just going to receive only the name of the movie. So let's do that. I'm just going to select the name. And as you see that first story four, the Lion King and whatever, okay? It, it just brings me now the plain uh, name of the movie. So instead of just displaying it, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign that um, cleaned value into my movie uh, object, the name parameter. So right after the selection, it's going to uh, change the name into that. But I should also take the cost as well, okay? To take the cost, I'm going to use another um, parameter. I'm just going to show you that one as well. So CLG, uh, okay, the name of the movie is, okay, sorry, not the name. The cost of the movie is coming from item.target. I will just show you um, what I'm going to use after the targets. 
So when I just save, uh, okay, I'm just going to select the Toy Story 4, okay? As I see that, for, um, for each of those selections, for each of those selections, there are values. So values are the parameters which are passing from uh, layers of applications between each. They are just to uh, just to use in a real application or uh, in the development area. Users do not interact with these values. Users do interact with this given part, which is in between the opening and closing option tags. But as developer or while we are handling the cases in application development, we need to uh, take the values. So in here, I'm going to say that, bring me the value. These values are, are for our case now, it is uh, the price, but in real life applications, sometimes they are going to be the IDs or some kind of unique values, which will help you to uh, proceed the rest of the application based on that selection. So when I just save it, I'm going to make a selection in here now. I select the Toy Story 4. And as you see that, it returns the value as eight. And if I just change it to Joker, it is 12. So right, like what I did up in here, I'm going to say that this is going to be movie.cost, okay? I think it will be better if I say price, but whatever. Okay, hmm. I have one. Okay, while we are already in the beginning of the application, I'm just going to correct that. Name, okay, so it should be good. Okay, let's see. So uh, what I'm expecting is, let's see if I make that change, uh, is anything changing in here or not? Let's see how it reacts. So I'm just going to go for Toy Story 4. Nothing is changing. So if I just go for Joker uh, 12, nothing is changing. Because this definition was defined in the very first time when the, uh, uh, when the JavaScript was loaded. So when the JavaScript first loaded, it goes from top to bottom everything and put the things in place. But when I just make a change in here, that change is not touching anything outside of these brackets. Okay, so if I need to call them, so I need to bundle them in a function. So that's why I told you that I, I need to put them in function. Uh, so here we are. I'm just going to call that as a function, let's say update. Okay, but update is something like possibly being used in some other places can be a reserved keyword. So uh, I'm not so sure either it is or not, or may cause some further, um, let's say, confusions on the go because it's updating, but updating what? Either is it updating in here or updating uh, the text or updating the entire page. So we need to be better be specific. So what it updates is it is updating the text, okay? Or I can just say updating the text, but instead of saying any text, I'm just going to say that update uh, final text, okay? It's, it's all about um, how you would like to make your code cleaner for the upcoming developers. And sometimes also for yourself, because uh, when you visit your code after a couple of days, you should be remembering what that function was doing or what that uh, method uh, was developed for. So, but the problem in here is when I just bundle it in here, when the code flows from top to bottom, as you see that this is a kind of event, uh, and event was not triggered, so therefore it was not impacted. 
And this is a function. The function was defined, but it was not called. So therefore it's not being affecting uh, our page. So uh, when, when I just define it as a function, I lost my feature in here. So what I need to do is, I'm just going to put in here one more event listener. So that is going to target the window. So this event listener is a kind of specific event listener, which is going to be triggered when the page loaded completely. So whenever all the contents of the page properly placed and the, um, properly collected, then this function, which of this event is going to be triggered. So it doesn't need to have any uh, parameters to trigger because uh, what I need what I need to do in here is to call some functions in default. So I'm just going to say that uh, update final text. So when I save it, say now we are good. What I'm going to do when I make this change, I want this update final text to be triggered within the event listener. So, so we will see the change to take place in this final text. Therefore, I'm going to say that after you take these pieces, please update final text for me. Okay, when I just save, let's see how will it proceed. I'm just going to select something in here, Joker and 12, here we are. It's working good. And uh, Toy Story 4 and 8, it's, it's doing precisely well. Uh, consider that we have a number of seats assigned as a um, hard-coded way as five, okay? So we have done lots of things in here. First, we build up a logic to change the uh, final text. Second, we kind of find and use the pieces from the movie selector. And based on these two features, we, we are now able to uh, take, take this in action. So up until here, do you guys have any questions? Okay, sounds great. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start uh, writing the code about uh, selecting the number of seats, uh, but I believe we are not able to finish it before the, the break start, but let us start about that. So what I'm going to do in here is, I need to make uh, these click actions, whatever I am doing, is to trigger as, um, as an event, okay? So in here, the action is give the click, so it should be triggering an event. So I need to put in here an event listener, but where to put that event listener? So that event listener is not that easy or is not uh, that uh, maintainable on the long run to put on every day what we have in here. So therefore, we need to see how this uh, part was structured. So I'm going to go to the elements and I'm just going to hover over this row, for instance. So as I said to you, uh, we, it's not a, let's say, maintainable way to put the event listener for every seat. Yes, it is an approach, but it is not a, a proper way to handle it. If I go for a row, so that means that I have one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So I need to put six event listeners. Uh, it is better than seats, but not uh, uh, the proper way still. So if I go to screen, screen is something which is not I'm interested in. So that means that I need to ignore it. And the container. Container is the complete structure where all those divs are living in. 
So if I can handle the clicks happening within the div container, uh, I can kind of understand where was that click took place. So in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to define now another selector in here, and that selector is going to select the container class. So let's start with that. So instead of, okay. So here we have the movie selector and Okay, so in here, I'm going to say, I can say seats, no prob problem, or I can say container, but uh, the, the reason why I'm going to use this uh, selector as to, to find which seats were selected, I can go for seats or, let's go for, container seats sounds good actually <laughs> makes sense okay uh it's it's yeah that 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 makes sense for me thank you very much for deciding that yeah <laughs> so sometimes i'm just uh being so much picky picky about what to select okay container Okay, so it's the container and the seats. So what I'm going to do now in here is this. It's the seats that add event listener. So this add event listener is going, oops. That add event listener is going to check for the click event. And whenever the click event take place, I'm going to um, call a callback function. Okay, this callback function is going to take again the item in and then we are going to select uh, we are going to find what that item was okay so i'm just going to write in here um clg item dot target we learned earlier that uh if you uh put the target after the item in here so we are going to take the inner HTML part uh, of that, that section which was clicked. So I'm just going to show you this and we are going to give a break, just a second. So what I'm going to do now, I just click the console and in here I just click somewhere. So as you see that, it says that div class seed, that's good. What about this? It says div class screen. What about this? It says div class seed as well as echo file. So these are three possible places where a user can click. Or if I if I click somewhere in here row, that's another possibility. So, so the user can click either a row or screen or uh, the seats or seats which are echo file. And uh, then we are going to to start working about this after our break. Let's see. Okay, it's good to take a break. We are just at a great milestone. I'm going to push the code um, in the GitHub and I'm just going to paste it into the uh, Slack chat. If you would like to take it, you're free to take it from those two sources. Do you guys have any questions, by the way? Or we can answer your questions after the break is over. That will be more proper. Hello, everyone. Are you back? Yes. That's great. So are you able to see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Um, so uh, we are going to proceed, but first I would like to have your questions if you have any. Okay, sounds like no question. 
Uh, I want to share one of my earlier experience. Uh, when I was teaching in the uh, university, uh, the programming courses, at uh, that time I was teaching PHP, Java, sort of, yeah, object-oriented programming, data structures and algorithms. Okay, so when I was teaching those courses, I saw that the students were just copying and pasting my code in the theory class. When I was teaching something in the theory classes, I was just sharing my source code to the students. And in the practice, I was giving them a kind of assignment, which is like this, uh, like what I did in theory class, but a little bit with a little bit differences. So in the practice sessions, I saw that the students were copying and pasting my code, what I given in the um, theory class. And they were just thinking that they are writing the code or they are writing the uh, program. But that was a kind of illusion because they were using my code and they were just altering that code in a way they, they need to uh, achieve a goal. Yes, they were manipulating it, but it's not uh, writing the code. It is just uh, using a code as a kind of molding or it's a kind of template, then uh, changing some pieces in it. When we share the code with you, please try to uh, write that code by your own uh, instead of just copying and pasting. You can use our codes uh, to refer uh, some problem or how to solve some obstacles. But instead of just copying and pasting and thinking that, okay, I'm able to do that, please make your hands dirty and write that application by your own. That's uh, a kind of uh, experience what I gained when I was teaching that time. So after I learned that the students were just copying and pasting my code, uh, I stopped sharing my code as a text file. I was just taking the screenshots and I was sharing the pictures of my code to the students. And if they were uh, willing to uh, write that code in their practice sessions, they were supposed to write at least once uh, because they, they were not able to make the copy and paste from the, script, uh, from the image file. So uh, I suggest you guys to try to experiment more as much as, as you can so that that will uh, give you three indicator that how you are pro progressing. So after that one said, let's say where we were. So we have uh, enough functionality for the picking the movie. Now we were about to uh, select the seats in here. And to, to make that possible, uh, I was supposed to make the selection more relevant about what I'm going to select. So what I saw earlier, if you remember, when I clicked the screen, it was saying the classes screen. Uh, here is the classes seat. Here, the class is row. And here is the class is seat and equipoint. So for sure, I need to uh, ignore the row and screen. So therefore, I'm going to say that, show me this console.log message only if, only if the item, that target, that uh, class list is a uh, class list actually contains contains um, seed. So if the item, whatever I'm clicking, has the seed as its class, then show me that. That's that's what my ruling here is. So when I click on screen, I don't see the console.log message in here. If I click somewhere in between the seats in here, I don't see the row either. But if I click on the seat, I see the seat message in here. If I click on this um, occupied seats, 
I do see it as well. So what I need to say in here is I need to ignore those seeds which were equipped. So to ignore that, this time I'm going to add one more logic in here. I'm going to say that. And item dot target dot class list um, contains equipped. So if it was not if it was not, so therefore I put in here exclamation mark, if it was not containing the echo pipe, but it is containing the seat. So when I just say, I'm just going to try now, I click the echo pipe seat. I don't see the console.log message. Here I don't see, here I don't see, but if I select something in here, see, now I do see the, um, the related uh, seed messages in here. So I'm okay with that, but I kind of didn't like to repeat the same statement twice, even though it's just two lines. Uh, I don't like that. So therefore I'm just going to write in here the constant uh, class list is going to be, but the class list uh, I, I don't want to use the same in here. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a defined property already. I don't want to use it in here. And uh, it can be, but I don't want to use that. So I'm going to say seat class list, okay, or seat class or item class because I'm clicking the item, item classes. Oops. Item classes. So item classes is going to be this one. And that item classes contains, or that item classes contains in here too. Okay. So let's see if everything is still intact. It is not working. It's not working. It's not working, but this one is working. So it, it is still functioning well. So if that's the case, what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to uh, make it appear like a selected item. So to make it selected, I just need to see how it was defined in the CSS definition, because the selected is supposed to be another uh, class in here. To, uh, to give that uh, two pause or bluish look in here. So I'm just going to open the styles.css. Okay, movie container select. Okay, uh, container seat selected. Okay, this one is the one. So it is just the selected text. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do in this case, instead of just displaying me this message, please, uh, for that class array, what I have in here, item classes, this toggle. The toggle means that if there's present, remove it. If it's not present, put it in. So I'm just going to put in here, select. So let's see how will it behave. I'm just going to try in here. Okay, as you see that, now I am able to blue, uh, paint it into that bluish color, that's good. So what I need to do now in here is, whenever that selection take place, that's not the only place where I need to make the change. Uh, right now I'm only making the change if it is uh, sorry, I'm only making the change only at the representation level. I'm just changing its CSS style. But also I need to reduce or increase the number of seats in here. So right now I'm going to change the number of seats as zero because eventually uh, when we just load the page, 
there is no seed selected in here yet. So therefore it is zero. What I'm going to say in here is if uh, item classes contains selected, if that item that that seat where I clicked already have a uh, selected as its class. That means that that seat was selected before. So when I select it for one more time, that means that I'm unselecting it. So whenever I'm unselecting it, I need to reduce the number of seats from its existing number to one less. So therefore, I'm going to say that movie dot number of seats minus minus, okay? Else, that mean, else means that there is no number of seats was selected so far. So I'm just going to removing it. So in, oh, sorry, um, else means that uh, the item classes do not have the selected. That means that that is not yet selected. So when I uh, click on it, it is going to turn into selected. So therefore I'm going to add the movie that number of seats plus plus. So uh, to show you that what we are doing, I'm just going to uh, write in here, console.load message movie dot number of seats. So if you see in here, if I click once, I, I see that there's only one seat was selected. If I click in here two, three, four, and so on. But if I unselect any of the seats, it reduced to three. If I click one more, it reduced to two. If I click one more, it reduced to one. So after this take place, after this take place, please also update the final text. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say in here, update the final text. So that means when I take action, based on that action, I'm expecting to see the number of seats are supposed to change based on that selected movie, the price is supposed to change as well. Let's see if I'm lucky that should be happening. I click this one. Okay, it says that number of seats is one. So the movie is $10, so it is $10. So I select one more seat, two seats and $20. That's good. Let's change the movie. If I change the movie to Toy Story 4, so it's $8, two, two seats. That means that it should show me the price as $16. So here it is, the number of seats and it's $16. And if I just remove one, it's one seat and $8. So that looks good. Three seats, um, Joker is $12. So it's going to be $36. So that's good. So, um, we are halfway done already. The remaining action is something which is about carrying the selection um, to the next visit. To the next visit means that whenever the page was loaded, it is supposed to still stay. That means if I refresh now my page, my current page, it's going to remove the content. See, it is three seats, Joker the movie, and the, uh, the price is $36. So if I refresh the page, they were all gone. Now, what I'm supposed to do is I need to build another logic to keep them uh, steady even the page was locked. So do you guys have any question up until this point? Okay, thank you very much, John. So 
let's continue. Okay, this is the event listener. This is another. Okay, so what I'm supposed to do now in here is I need to carry the messages from present state to the next state. Next state means uh, after the page was reloaded. To carry the uh, to carry any data or any info from one state to another state, we do have several tools to use. One of them is session. One of them is cookie. Um, and uh, if I'm not wrong, sometime around 16, 2016, uh, or some, sometime around that time, uh, there is another tool developed and it's actively being used in um, JavaScript environment. That is local storage. So what local storage does? The local storage is the feature where the browsers are holding the, um, the visitor, inform, uh, visitor data within the client computer. So those records are not saved in server, not in database. It is uh, recorded, it is saved in the client computer. That means that the selections, whatever you did in here, may not be appear in some other computers. So that, that's all performing being saved within here. So where to reach it? Uh, in the uh, developer toolbar, if you go to the application, so within the application, we have here the local storage. So, so far for this page, the local storage is empty. If you go and check one of your pages, what you did visit earlier, let me just go for the Google, okay, the search bar. I just inspected it and I click applications. So as you see that the local storage do have some variables, some um, list of variables actually. These are not a single variable. Those are like having the key and the value pairs. Uh, like the map. So the uh, whatever is saved in here was based on my earlier visits. Because it's at the client's computer, client has the privilege to remove or manipulate these values. Uh, so as developer, uh, we do not uh, relay or we do not um, trust the values which are coming directly from client's uh, computer, uh, if that is not uh, so critical. For example, if you are talking about the credit card values or something confidential, uh, most of the websites do hold uh, those sort of critical values into their database or into some kind of other applications. Because if the data is, uh, stored in uh, in client's computer, there is uh, a chance of manipulation of that data. But in our case in here, we are not talking about the critical data. It's, it's all about selected seats. And I just need to transfer whatever that those seats are into the next state. So what I'm going to do in here is I first of all need to um, hold uh, those selections to carry to the next visit. So what I'm going to do is, before I update the final text, I would like to uh, carry those informations to the next visit. So what I'm going to do in here is, first of all, I need to see, uh, how many seats were selected or what are the selected seats are. So what I'm going to do, let's start, okay, let's save. I'm going to save. Some values in here, as you see that the update final text is triggered after every selection because it is coming from seeds click event. So in here, I'm going to write 
uh, a constant. So this is going to hold the selected seeds. Okay. So the selected seeds are going to come from documents that uh, get, sorry, query. Query selector. Actually, in here, I'm not going to select only one because there might be more than one selection. Therefore, I'm going to go for selector all. So in here, I'm going to ask that, please bring me uh, under the row class, under the row class, any seat which was selected. Did you understand the, the statement, what I did in here? It is actually going to select uh, any selected seats which are under the row class. So the, these are all classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that CLG in here. So we'll see what I mean. Selected seats. So uh, let's see how we will go for that. Console. So as you see that the node list is zero because there is no seat was selected. I'm going to select this one. So as you see that there is one item selected. And if I select one more in here, there's another item was selected and those are being saved as the note lists. So uh, I now I know which divs are selected. Okay, so uh, these are the selected divs, but these are now created from the um, from my selection. But when the page was loaded, we are expected nothing to be selected in default. In default, we know that those seats are something coming from the bigger list. Okay, so we kind of need to. Um, need to find a way to point out which of them were selected, okay? So what I'm going to do is something like this. Uh, please don't bring me everything in the container. I specifically need the not selected seats. So from the non-selected seats, what I mean in here is this. If you look at this, um, when, when the page was first loaded, the page is going to come this way. So that means that there are some gray seats which are not selected yet. From those not selected items, I need to go and say that change these items state from non-selected to selected. But first of all, I need to have the common understanding of the page in the before and after states. To have that common understanding, what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to define another constant, another variable, but this variable is going to hold uh, not in a seat, but the seats which are not selected. So in the application, it says NA. So I'm going to say that NA seats. So NA seats are inside the document. And within the document, again, I'm going to select more than one item. So therefore, I'm going to say the query all. Inside this uh, document, please bring me something which is inside the row classes and which is a seat. But this seat is not select, not occupied. I'll select it, not occupied. So let's see what it means. Okay, uh, I, I'm just trying to go step by step. So uh, if you start to confuse, if you start to Okay. 
Hmm. Uh, yeah, the question, okay, I'm sorry, John. Oh, okay, you just asked it, that's good. So you said that, could you also use Ajax for this type of program so that it can be updated without refreshing the page? So what Ajax does is uh, Ajax refresh, Ajax let the part of the um, presentation or part of the page or maybe the entire page to be reload to be uh, reflected by the user selection without loading the page. So what we are doing in here is the same like Ajax, uh, because when we make that selection in here, we are not reloading the page. The reloading the page means that either you hit this one, see there there is a, a small circle is coming up. So this is the reload, or if you go to the network, okay, I'm just going to clear out. So when the reload takes place, as you see that lots of items are being uh, reloaded. But in here, in our state now, when we just make a change, so if we change the joker, or if we select something in here, as you see that nothing is populated back from the uh, backend or back from its resource. So what we are doing is already a kind of synchronized behavior. Okay, so I was just about to show what I meant about this NA seats. So let me just copy this. Uh, CLG. Oops. And ACs. Let me just put this one not in here, but right up. So if you look at the code now, it's called the console.log. As you see that that NI seats, sorry, and A seats are like not equipped, uh, not assigned seats, are having 39 items. So these are, if, if I hover on it, you will see that which one it is. So they all have their own index and each of those index are indicating something, uh, some seats which are not equified. So I'm just going to go over and as you see that, this is the item number 10, uh, zero base indexing, remember that. And this is the item number 11. And they are not side to side, they're not adjusted. They are apart from each other because of the rule we define. Our rule definition says that, bring me the seats which are not equified, okay? So therefore these numbers, yes, zero to something, they are just side to side, but uh, something like these two guys, are having the next number after each, but uh, they are not represented side by side, okay? So uh, you are going to see that uh, NA seats are going to be used to define uh, which seats were selected, okay? So how we will do that? I am just going to write the code step by step. Okay, let me just uh, copy and paste this code to the class chat. Okay, so let us continue. Do you guys have any question? Zamira? No, I don't. Okay, okay, that's good. So uh, John is just writing his questions via the chat and I'm trying to answer them so far. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some, uh, some sort of array manipulation uh, code in here. So let's start with that. So the selected seats, as you remember that, it was, okay, I, I don't need this one anymore. 
the screen up because it's going to mess up with the console.log. So the selected seats is actually number of items in an array. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to focus on every single one of them, every single one of those items in the array. So whenever I'm talking about every single one of those, that means that I can use the spread operator in here. So I'm just going to say that, please, whatever the every single item in here, uh, As you remember the map, uh, in the map, we were taking an, uh, an array and we were just trying to uh, alter or manipulate or get something from that array and we were creating another piece of array. So the, uh, the result of the map uh, method, we are going to have another array in our hand. And let's see what this array is going to do for us. So this map array is going to take uh, a variable coming from the seeds. So we select one single item, that one single item is going to be our seed. And I'm going to ask that, please call this callback function. And this callback function is going to show me the index of that seed inside, inside this NA seeds. So uh, what happens in here, let me just write the code and I will re-explain it. Let me just do that. So what it does is, as I see in here, let me just try to explain it uh, in whole as one body. And uh, please interrupt me if you cannot understand any of these uh, definitions of what I'm about to do. So what we are trying to do in this line number 42. Line number 42, is uh, taking the selected seeds, but so far we don't have any selected seeds. Okay, so therefore I'm going to make one selection. That is going to be this one. Okay, so ignore the first one. I'm I'm just talking about this one now. So it says that the selected seeds uh, we have more than one selected seeds or one selected seed. So I, I just put it inside the map, sorry, inside the array, okay? So when I put it inside the array, now I'm able to uh, use the array methods in here. So I said that, please uh, trigger the map method. So the map method is going to talk about that seat. That seat was the seat what I selected in here. And asking the uh, index of that seat, index of that seat, what I just clicked, inside the NA seats array, what I have created in here. Why I put that in this way? Because as you remember, let me just put that one in here as well. Okay, as in here, those are being node lists, okay? So that's not an array, it's the, the node list, okay? So in here, I am just putting that spread operator in here. Actually, I just want to spread or um, the task what happens in here is it takes those notes which are 
uh, we're being put inside and here has one array. Okay? So when those 39 of them put inside this array, I, I ask the index of I Are guess you, you, you okay. yeah. I guess yeah. you need to start all over because you were like breaking up very badly, so I didn't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. I will recover that. Okay, so let's uh, re-explain the line number forty-four. Okay, so uh, first of all, let me just show you what we have in our hand. So let us see. Let me just put that one in, also in the console that will. Selected seats. Okay, I did use the selected seats. I did use the NA seat. NA seat is coming from there. Okay, that's good. So let me just save. I'm trying to explain now the line number 45. Okay, so in the line number 45, what we are doing is we are taking independent note lists. These are the notes which are being pulled by the query selector all methods. And they are independent notes, but were, they were just bundled together in this uh, constant uh, variable, okay? So when it is being holden here, I was not able to apply the map method because that's not an array. So first of all, I put those independent nodes in that array container. So in here, in here, uh, the map is now functional. So what I'm saying that when I click one of the seats in here, I'm just going to click something in here. It says, uh, based on that click, Take that seat. So the, that click, what I just recently did, is that seat which is in this yellow parenthesis. Okay. So I'm using that seat to find the index. So that index of the seats. But where was that being indexed? It was being indexed in another note list. So that note list was the note list of uh not uh, assigned seats so in here it's it's a kind of uh long story short we are just selecting a seat and once we select that seat we are taking its index because we are going to use that index when the page was reloaded to appear like it has been assigned seat or it has been a selected seat not assigned so uh, do you guys have any question about this line, which is line number 45? Okay. So what I'm going to do in here is, I'm just going to take whatever that assignment was, Okay, so we, we, we can cover the maps for one more time. When, when we need the maps, uh, actually that, that's a question from John. Uh, the maps are creating an array based on a source array. So what was our source array? Our source array in here is that selected seats. So we are using those seats, selected seats, uh, array, what we have in here, we are using uh, another array in here to generate us some index counters. So what I mean in here is this. So, okay, I'm just going to remove this. When I save it, when I click something, okay, I didn't write the console button. So the selected seat and the not selected seat, 
sits two different arrays, right? You're right. So okay. not, not selected seats. Um, think about this. Uh, you are going to talk between two states of the page. The first state is the state which has no selection at all. And that's the plain page without any movie selected, without any seat selected. So this is the common understanding between the before and after state of the page. So that list is here in the before state. Is It's also going to be here in the after state. So that's, that's the common understanding of both of the states, both of the pages. So what we need to do is when we select something from the before state, we need to carry those selections into the after state. So what we are trying to do now in here, in, in this now line four to two, we are just trying to find which seats were selected. Right. So to, to make that decision, we need to talk between those two states of the page uh, based on a common understanding. And that common understanding is NA seats in here. Okay. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to write this console.log for one more time. So if I just select any seats in here, as you see that now I am carrying over whatever the indexes are of those seats. Okay, now these are the seats what I selected. If I unselect something, it is also reducing. Okay. So now I'm able to hold the indexes of those selections. Uh, let me just do something in here. Instead of making that console.log, now what I'm going to do in here is, I am going to hold them in, a variable, okay? Uh, I can define it as a constant index holder because that's what it does. It's, it's holding the indexes, okay? Whenever those indexes are being hold, I'm going to put those indexes in, uh, in the local uh, storage. So, what I'm going to do is please put inside the local storage set item. Whenever we are talking about the set item, set item takes two parameters. The first parameter is the key, which is going to be, uh, let's say selected seats, selected seat indexes, okay? And the second parameter is going to be the item, the value what you want to pass to the after state. So to passing this value is going to use um, a method inside the JSON uh, object. Okay, the JSON object is uh, because the local storage takes the string as the value. So we need to stringify, we need to convert that array into a string form. So I'm just saying that please JSON, help me to stringify this item what I just created. Uh, that was index. Okay. Indexes or sorry, index holder. Index holder. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, it's break time, but I will just show you one thing and we are going to go to break. So I just refresh the page. Uh, I'm just going to open the application. So inside the application now, the local storage has nothing. But when I start selecting it, it's, oh, I didn't save it. <laughs> That's good. Let me just save it. I was surprised that it's not saving. Okay. So inside the uh, local storage, I have selected seat indexes as the key, as the key, as you see that selected seat indexes is the key, and this is the value. And if you look at the value, the value is nothing. So when I start selecting something, see, it is the zeroth index, it is the two, it is whatever, okay? And I'm just unselecting it. 
and they are gone. So what happens now in here, we are able to select them. Once we select them, we are able to keep them in the local storage. What we need to do next is to carry whatever that local storage values are from before state to the after state. I'm going to share this code with the class chat as well as the GitHub. Uh, you are free to get them. Um, if you have any questions or if you, once you look at this code, if you have any question after the break, uh, you are very most welcome, okay? So let me just share the code with you guys. Where exactly uh, in, in on the GitHub that code is? Because I cannot. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm just going to share that uh, URL as well. Just a second. Let me just okay. push this one too. I uh, wanted to get the uh, HTML file as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can send them. I have them already from GitHub. Oh, thank you. I'm just sharing with you guys the URL of the GitHub where, where I am pushing the code. You can either get it from there or here. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay. I think we deserve a break. So at nine, we will be back and we will continue coding. I believe he will be joining soon. Yes, he is here. That's great. So uh, now the fun begin. What we have done so far is quite good, but uh, what's missing is is to uh, carry over whatever the previous selections are into the present uh, or into the new state. So uh, what I'm going to do actually, uh, I like to separate the functions based on their functionalities. Uh, so if you see in here, this functionality, what we have done in here between the line 41 to 46, is handling something apart from updating the final text. It is more about um, saving into local host, oh, sorry, local storage. So what I am planning to do now in here is I'm just going to take this code out from here and I'm just going to pay, uh, create another function. That function is going to be um, save to local storage. And this function is going to do exactly whatever uh, we did up in here, update final text. Now what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to call that function. I'm just going to say that save to local storage. The benefit of this approach is whenever we encounter with a problem, uh, we are able to separate the functionalities according to their uh, defined tasks into their names. So um, what I'm going to do now in here is, I'm just going to write a code to uh, carry over whatever those saved values are into the uh, the fresh state of the page. I'm a fresh state is the reloading of the page. So let me just go to the console. Okay. So whenever the page was reloaded, um, that should take uh, the action. So whenever the page was reloaded, that means that actually, what about that? Window.load. Okay. So whenever the window that loads, that is also the reload. So here is the function which is going to take place. Um, put 
saved values. So I'm going to build a function which is going to be named as put saved values or place put place saved values. So that place saved values is going to do something the reverse of the save to local storage. Save to local storage was uh, collecting some data from the uh, action of the user and saving them into local storage. That local storage was being kept by the Google Chrome for our case. And uh, our new function, place saved values is going to unbox that local storage and take whatever is inside and place them into the required places. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm just going to write the console.log, local storage. So let's see, of course I need to have the parentheses. Okay, so if you see in here, the storage, whatever we have, has uh, only one item, that is the selected seed indexes. And the selected seed indexes actually has nothing in it. So when I just start selecting something in here, and if I reload the page, now I see that the storage has still one item that is the selected seed indexes. And the select the seat indexes has an array in here. Actually, that's not an array. It is stringified. I mean, it's an array, but it's in the form of string. It's not behaving like a string. Sorry, behaving like an, um, what to say, array. It, it is more like behaving like a string now. So what I'm going to do in here in the very first step is, I'm just going to take that item which is stringified in here, as you see here. I'm just going to unpack it. So what I'm going to say, please get item. Uh, this get item is going to be the same key what we used down in here, selected seat indexes. Just copy it and I just paste it in. So instead of just, uh, Printing entire local storage. I'm just focusing this one in here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I just select something. And if I refresh the page, it's in here. But as you see, that it is uh, behaving like a string. How we understand that this is behaving like a string, uh, you will see that in this difference. Nice. I'm just going to say for the below one, Jason, please help me to parse this value. So the below one, the second one in here is the parse, well, the parse method. The parse method is taking that string um, JSON object and convert it into a proper, um, data structure, in, in our case in here, it's the array, okay? So let's see how it really affects. So I just select something in here. So if I reload the page, as you see that the one which is on the top is behaving like a string, but the one which is on the bottom is behaving like an array. As you see that zero index, first index, second index. So this is, I mean, the second one is the proper way how to, um, how to handle uh, those JSON objects. So whenever you are passing in here the JSON object, whenever you are passing in here the arrays uh, or an object, you better use the stringify and the parse. But if you are uh, carrying in here the string or integer value, so you can just uh, put it in as it is and then you can use it as it is. So what we have now in here, this item what we received is going to be a constant value for us. That is um, pre-selected 
seeds. These are the pre-selected seeds. Pre-selected seeds, I, I named it that way because those were selected before the page was loaded. So uh, what I'm going to do in here is, I'm going to take a decision. So that decision is about uh, either there is something in the pre-selected seats or not. So I'm just going to say that. If uh, the pre-selected seats is not equals to null, if there's not a null value, and if that pre-selected seats dot length dot length is greater than zero, that means that if it has a value inside it. So the first one is checking that if the pre-selected was defined, means it is not null. And second one is checking that if it is defined, but it also has some values in it. So in that case, I'm going to take some action in here. So what that action is, now I'm going to talk with that common understanding what I explained in our second session. I'm going to say that, hey, NA seats. Okay, I'm just going to take that. Hey, NA seats, uh, I have a request for you. Please visit every item of yours. And whenever you are visiting every item in, of yours, I'm just going to ask you to find seat and index. Okay. These are two parameters it's going to take. Uh, so. It's going to take two parameters in here. So the first parameter, the seat, the second parameter is the index. So the seats. Um, Just a second. Okay. And what it does is if pre selected seats that index of index. So what I'm saying in here that if pre-selected seats, index of index is greater than minus one. So that is only checking if it is available. So what it does is uh, pre-selected seats are the selections what we have done, which are this array. Just a second, let me just select something and I will just show you that. Okay, wow, ah, not that. But of course, it will give an error message in here because I didn't close this brackets properly. Just a second. I believe we have this. So, um, let me just scan out here. I will just show you that. I'm just taking those values in here at the console.log to show you guys. So let me just make some selections. So that is going to trigger in the second visit. So after I select them, I just visit them. So okay, let me write them. Index. And I'm going to write in here. Sorry. 
So uh, okay, let me just select these and let me reload. So if you look at this index zero, index two, index 15. So these are the indexes inside the N, um, inside the NA seats. So this zero, uh, okay. This zero means this one. And this two means zero, one, two, this one. And 15, I believe that's the selection what I have done somewhere in here. But this is zero, one, two, whatever I selected in here are coming from the pre-selected seats. That means that uh, it is just taking the indexes from the pre-selection and it's going to assign it to the um, NA seeds array. It's a little bit confusing, but let me just put the code in here. I believe you guys will understand when I put it in injection. See that class list. Um, not, we can use the toggle, but I will just add in here. Toggle will do the same effect, but okay, let's put the connection. I'm just going to select um, side to side so that that will be easier for us to track it. So what I'm going to do after I reload the page, uh, up until now, it was removing those selections, but now when I reload the page, see, they are still selected. So what happened in here? Uh, let me just show you that in, in detail. I, first of all, when the page was loaded, when the page was loaded, I called the place saved values function. The place saved values function visit the local storage. And from the local storage, it takes the string version of selected seed indexes and convert them into the array. So what I have in here is the pre-selected seeds is the array what I have. But this pre-selected seeds array has uh, the index of those previously selected seats. So what I did in here, if that pre-selected seats is not null, and if that pre-selected seats has some item in it, do something. Okay, here's the place what we need to understand. What it does is it takes the NA seats, I mean, uh, the entire not assigned seats, so not assigned seats are the default gray seats, uh, excluding the uh, the white ones. And it's taking an, uh, a loop in here. It's the for each loop. And the for each loop have two items. One of them is the seat. One of them is the index. So these are the seats. The items are the seats. And the indexes are um, wherever they are uh, pointed to. What, whatever their indexes are. So what it says is, please go to the pre-selected seat and check, is that indexed in here? So uh, I'm just thinking that maybe I, I better use that in the PowerPoints. Just, I, I will just try to explain it as clear as I can. 
uh, please uh, stop me if you have any question. So I have two arrays in here. One of them is the pre-selected. Uh, I assume that the pre-selected has the array which has the values as zero and two and five, okay? And I have another array. That is NA seats, non-assigned seats. And this non-assigned seats has all the um, numbers, zero, uh, one, two, three, four, five, okay? What my loop is doing is this. It is running the loop based on the NA seats. So this is my source and this is the place where the loop is running through or iterating through. So what it does is it is taking two attributes. One of them is the seat, one of them is the index. So uh, seat is actually, whenever we say the seat, we mean the, uh, the div tag, which is uh, that div seat, this one, okay? It says that take the index and check if that index, if that index is also an index of the pre-selected. So it says that if that index is greater than minus one. So greater than minus one means that if it exists or not exist. So is zero exist in both of them? It does exist in both of them. So because it exists in both of them, the, the div tag, which has, uh, which is in the uh, NA seats, is going to be marked as selected. But if you look at this one, the one is inside the NA seats. It's in here, it's inside the NA seats, but, if you search that one inside the pre-selected, if you search that one inside the pre-selected, it means the line number 56, that one is not inside the pre-selected because one is not inside the pre-selected. That seat, that div, is not going to have the selected class attached to it. Do you guys clear with this logic? Do you have any question about this logic? Because this is the logic which we need to focus in here. Any question? If you are clear, I will proceed to the next steps. Do you guys have any question about this logic? No? No, but it's kind of yes and no <laughs> of understanding okay. it for me. <laughs> so uh, what we are looking in here is actually we have two arrays and we are comparing some values in between each other. So it's a little bit confusing, I do understand. Yeah. So therefore I, I try to explain it this way. So what happens so, um, here, If it uh -huh. has the same element, I mean, items as seats, it's considered as it's selected, right? Yes, you are right. So okay, in this so case, it's not there, then it's not selected. That's exactly it does. Okay, so, okay. So if it is greater than minus one, that means that it is exist. It is, it is present in both of the arrays. So okay. if it is present in both of the arrays, we are adding the selected class to that div. But okay. if it does not exist in both of the arrays, so in that case, this if logic is going to fail and this will not proceed. That means that that selected class will not be added to that div. Okay. Okay, that, that's what it does in, in very briefly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me just be back between my code and it from.
Okay, so what we have in here is very good. We are now able to carry those uh, seeds. But once we carry those seeds, uh, the problem is our application shows that those seeds are selected in the, in the chart, but it doesn't reflect in here. Say it still says that zero seats, but it seems like there are four seats are already selected. And the problem is if I unselect it, it goes minus one, it goes minus two, it goes minus three. So that, that's an issue in here. To overcome this problem, what I can just say is after this loop is over, after this loop is over, I can just say that please inside the movie dot oops movie dot number of seats is accused to pre-selected seats dot length so what it does whatever the number of pre-selected seats are it is going to be carry over see now if i just select uh, okay four seats and if i refresh the page so that four seats is remaining with me, got it? So this place saved values is carrying over the number of seats from the earliest, uh, from the um, previous state to the new state. Okay, so far we are good, but there is something missing in here. The missing thing is, well, let's see if uh, I will have enough time to cover that part. So as you see that, it says that you have selected four seats for Avenger Endgame film, you will pay $40. What if I select, uh, let's say, Toy Story 4? It says uh, you have four seats for Toy Story 4 and you need to pay $32, that's good. But if I reload the page, it just goes back to the Avengers game. It's, it is just holding only the number of seats. Would it be one to try to hold both number of seats as well as the, uh, the, the movie, what we pick? So in that case, what we need to do is very simple actually. What we need to do is we need to go to our code and we will just say that uh, save to local storage area. So inside the save to local storage area, what I will say is very simple. I'm just trying to copy these uh, save to, uh, sorry, local storage set item. And now I'm going to save in here movie name, or I can just say movie, no problem. And the next one was going to be, I can just carry only the movie, but uh, to make it easier, I'm just going to carry the price as well. So I will not supposed to, uh, what I say, uh, go and find the price uh, as I did in here, in movie selector. So I'm going to carry them both. So what I will say is I'm just going to say, uh, the movie and the price. And the movie is going to be movie.main. And the price is going to be movie.price. So when I save it, let's see how will it go. Uh, okay, uh, now I have four seats selected. To observe the difference, I'm going to select the fifth space. So there are five seats, Avenger and Gabe, and I'm supposed to pay fifty dollars. I'm I'm going to select now the Toy Story four. So what happens is I selected five seats. That's great. Toy Story four. That's great. Price is forty. That's great. And see, Toy Story four is selected in here. But if I refresh the page. It is still keeping it as it was. So the problem in here is, the problem in here is, 
uh, whenever I make that selection done, uh, I, I put that in the local storage, but I didn't carry them over to the new page and to the new page to the new state. So what I need to do is I just need to come in here and I just need to say that please carry the movie dot name as okay local storage dot get item. In here we are using the key value pair. So whatever the key you define down in here, you need to use the same. So it is movie and oops. And I need to say the movie dot price is supposed to be local storage dot get item price. So let me just save and let's try now how will it go? Okay, now one more test. I'm just going to take only two seats, okay? Uh, and I'm going to go for um, the Lion King, okay? So it is two seats, Lion King, $80, that's good. So when I refresh the page, let's see how will it go. So two seats, that's good. Lion King, that's good. $18, that's good. But now we have an issue about the uh, selector in here. The selector goes back to the end game. If I want to carry, the selector also like the Lion King uh, or also like the rest of the selections what I have done. So I need to make one another change. That change is going to be something like this. Inside the place saves values, I'm going to, uh, where was that? we have this movie selector, okay? So what I'm going to say that, um, I'm going to use the same approach what we did uh, in here uh, to, to convert uh, the options, sorry, I'm moving up and down too much. So the movie selector, whatever we have it here, if you look at this, CLG, movie, did I make this problem or something? Yeah. Okay. So this movie selector dot options. So let's see what it has actually. As you see that it has HTML options collection. So it is an HTML options collection. I'm just willing to convert it first of all array. So if I convert it into array, I have a chance to uh, manipulate the data within that. So I'm going to say that uh, please convert this uh, collection into an array. And let's see what it is now. As you see that now it has turned, it has turned into array. So each of these options are the options what we have in here. So what I'm going to do in here, in this options for, for each of them, I'm going to use the map method. So within this map method, I'm going to say that this is a movie. So I'm just going to write in here M. Uh, and this movie is going to be, sorry. Let me just check the parentheses. Okay, everything's good. So uh, what I'm supposed to do in here is something like this. If this movie that inner text, that inner text is the name of the movie, okay? search uh, within that name of the movie in here, for example, uh, Avengers Endgame, Joker, Toy Story 4, but 
that's not the only part. It's also containing that parenthesis and the price part as well. Uh, it is searching in entire string, whatever we see in here. It is searching something that searching is going to be. Okay, let me just share this up. So I will use that easily. Number of seats should be in here. Okay, I'm just going to put that in here. Okay, so I'm just going to use the movie.name. So I am searching the name of that movie. If it is inside there, so that means that its index is expected to be zero, but just to be in the safe side, I just made it greater than an EQs. But to actually what I'm expecting it to be EQs to zero. Uh, because if there's minus one, that means I couldn't find it. Anything but minus one means that that word is inside that search uh, keyword. It's actually search source. So within here, I'm just going to um, make a change. So I'm going to say that within that uh, option, what I select, please add the class list. Actually, not class list. This is the select option. So that is going to be set attributes. Select it. Selected is an attribute which is uh, used in the select option HTML text. If you want something to be selected, uh, you just need to use the selected uh, keyword as I used in here. So let's try it, either it's working or not. So let me refresh the page. But before I refresh the page, let me remove first of all the items in the uh, local storage. So th this is the reason why we do not uh trust the client based uh collected data i'm just able to manipulate it any way i like so right now for instance i just remove all the selections i did so i'm just going to refresh the page so when i refresh the page as you see that it has been failed i will just check why it's failing but yeah it's failed so uh what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select something in here, Joker the movie, and I select these seats. So two seats, Joker is the name of the movie, and I need to pay $24. If I refresh the page, two seats, Joker is the movie, 24, and that's 12 in here. Okay, so that's good. I'm just going to go for the Toy Story 4, and I'm going to go for three seats. If I refresh the page, everything as it is. I just didn't like the way how it failed because after I deleted these ones, let me just try to see why what's why it's failing. So it says the selected seat is zero. Okay, uh, the movie. Hmm. So what I did in here, I forcefully changed the name of the movie. See, uh, but think in here, okay, I'm just going to show you why it failed in our case. Uh, I need to do that same change also for the price as well. But uh, let me just do, show you that first. Okay, element, sorry, console. Okay, this is another problem, which I am, which I know why it's happening like that. Just give me a second. I just click the Joker and I just select two movies. And if I refresh the page, that will be gone. So, why I have this, where is this console.log is coming? 67, my 67. 
okay, I don't need this one in here anymore. I just need to hit the proceed value. Okay, that's okay. So, uh, 554, hmm, okay. So what's happening in here is this. Uh, as developer, I assume that uh, something is going to come from the local storage, get item moving. But if user delayed the local storage as I did right here, Okay, if I just refresh the page, as you see that I received null in here. So what I did in here unexpectedly, uh, I assigned the null as the name of the movie. So in that case, if you do not want it to take place like that, you can just do something what we have learned in the last couple of sessions. Do you remember this? It was the knowledge operator. I can just say that if it is null, please make it default as Avenger the end team. And if the price is also null, please make it default as 10. And also for the pre selected seats length. So I'm going to put in here um, pre selected seats. Okay. So it says that cannot read the property of null of reading. Okay. I'm just going to say that in here. Question mark. You remember that this was avoiding this uh, fatal error. I just put it in here and I'm just going to say that if that is a null or undefined, uh, number of seats are going to be zero. So let me just save. Here we are. I just refresh the page and I have no error messages left with the help of those knowledge operators. Uh, but again, I'm telling you that the knowledge operators are something new. If you were handling this problem in, uh, in an old browser, this knowledge operator may not behave as it's intended. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save and I'm just going to try this page, either it's working well or not. So I just click the joker and I just select two movies, sorry, two seats. It is two seats, joker, $24. I refresh the page. Everything is good. I just made it three seats and the, the Lion King. It is three seats, Lion King, $27. If I refresh the page, it's working as well. So far, we are good in terms of coding. But what about your questions? Let me have your questions. Don't you have any question? Is it all clear? I'm pasting now the code to the class chat. I already push it to the GitHub. I'm going to give you one challenge, guys. So that challenge is, uh, a solution which I am going to offer you, which is doing almost like what we have done like this, but it is, Another approach. So let me just take this here. So I will be looking to you while I'm talking. So uh, I'm going to give you one another solution. That is a solution which is solving the problem, uh, solving the challenge, uh, but in a different way. What I want you guys to try to understand is, uh, I want you guys to read that code, go through it and think about why that developer think in that way? This is called reverse engineering. Sometimes when you join a team, uh, not sometimes, but most of the time when you join a team, the code will be there already. So what you need to do is 
you need to read the code, you need to understand, then you need to, uh, depending on your understanding, add or remove some functionalities or some features. That I'm going to copy and paste a code now in the class chat. Please look into that code and try to understand and try to understand why developer use that way in the code, okay? Try to go through the code and imagine what that code block is trying to do, how it handles, um, what is the thought process of that developer. Try, try to go through it. This is your first challenge. The second challenge is that code, if I'm not wrong, is able to carry the selected seeds from early state to late state or the new state. Uh, but it was not carrying the selected movie. Try to put that functionality within that code. So you right now have seen, sorry, you right now have seen how to carry over um, some variables or some definitions, some attributes, properties, whatever you call, from the early state of the page to the new state. This new code, what I just shared with you guys in the class chat, uh, is not carrying the selected movie from the old to the new session or to the new state. Try to use your skills and try to make that also being functional as well. So um, I think now it's your turn to ask questions and try to understand whatever we have done here so far more clear way. Uh, John said that he doesn't have any question. Anything about Zomira, do you have any question? Nope. Is it no nope because you couldn't understand? Is it no nope because everything is clear for both Jan and Zamira? Is there anything, any way how I can help you better? It's clear, you just need to uh, gain that logic. <laughs> for me, um, it makes sense. I think I just need uh, a little bit of time to like kind of soak it in. Yeah. I think, yes. yeah, I think on my own time, I would just look at the code and then try to uh, play around with it on my own. For example, yeah, yeah. For example, um, I don't. For example, I don't know the limits between what we can use the double question mark for or not, uh, and yeah, just in general, the use of map, like in like mm -hmm. why, like using map versus just creating another array, stuff like that. Just so I need to figure it out slowly. Yeah, actually, well, um, map is not creating mm -hmm. a new array. I mean, it's um, uh, you. Uh, like changing an old array to the new, or you kind of do something with the old array. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for this one, for this one, uh, the, the one what I used in 65 to 69, if I'm not wrong, instead of map, I can just use the filter in here too. Uh, that, that serves my goal uh, because my goal in here was doing something. Actually, uh, even I can use the for each in here, uh, not, no need to use the map. The, uh, the reality is when I first learned the programming that was years back, uh, map means something else, okay? But in the JavaScript uh, terminology, uh, map filter or um, reduce are very, fu very functional and very effective methods to use. But I'm also kind of um, sometimes thinking in the old fashion, but uh, after I write my code, I'm just revisiting my code and trying to make some retouches. Mm -hmm. It is like writing an article. Once you write the article, you need to read and read and read and uh, make some retouches, some corrections to, to make it better. So the, the code, what you see in here is not the first time written code. Before coming to class, I make myself ready. So uh, when I was teaching in the college, I was just saying my kids, my students that what you are going to see is an illusion. 
So what you did see within this three hours is also an illusion. So um, it will become reality once you write this code by your own. Uh, you both are actually having a really good understanding about it. You already told it by your own words. It is better you guys sit and try to write the code by your own. So that's, that's what I can say, uh, which will help you better understanding of it. If you guys do not have any questions, um, we can finish up this call. Uh, and for example, just as I told you, uh, I will be able to use in here for each. Uh, let me just try even in here. I'm What's the so difference sure between it. for each and map? Okay, I'm just going to show you now, just a second. I just save, let me just see, okay, why the map is there. Okay, just a second. I'm um, just... sorry, uh, I don't know why, but after I uh, updated my code for my solution, my JavaScript file, it's not working anymore. It's not clicking the selected seed anymore. Okay. Uh... Does it work on on yours? If you refresh, which uh, my 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 page? Okay, yeah. uh, let me just try. Okay, I'm just going to remove the things from the application to be at the same step with you. Okay, I just remove them all. Mine works. Yours works. What? Okay, let me... like, okay. I can't click it. You mean like, did you change for the for each or is just the old ones that we have finished? No, no, just right now, right now, I can't. Yeah, I mean, it works, yeah. What? Maybe you uh, can help something. Can, like can I, 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 I even tried, cop I tried copying and pasting exactly what we had too and it still don't work anymore. What? Did uh, you redeem anything? Because <laughs> I got so some of the- So uh, it was working? And then I, just in case if I missed something, I copy and pasted his new code and now it's not working. Wow. Oh, okay. So uh, you copy and paste which code? The second one or the first one? The first one. Because I, first one? Cause the, yeah, because the, sec the second one is different, right? Second one is different. Uh, yeah. Are you allowed to share the screen if you can? I will just look into what's happening from. Let me just yeah. stop sharing. Just a second. Huh. Are you allowed to share the screen? Yeah, give me one second. Okay, okay. Screen. Screen two. Sure. Okay. Uh, can you also uh, show me the uh, browser? So uh, let me the console, please? let me close this, and then from here I'm gonna do. It's not working. Why? Oh, it it, it is not about. I, uh, it's not clicking on the. Uh, browser or something else? I, I just yeah, on the browser, that. it's not so. It's not when I click it, it's not selecting. Okay, can, can you just right click and open the console, please? Yeah. Uh, okay, you are. Mm -hmm. Fail to load resource. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you please? Oh, you know what? I think I know what's wrong. I think I know what's wrong. Is it wrong. JS? You, you it's this. JS. It's this. 
Yeah, I wanted to tell you why is it do you have that? There you go. Okay, <laughs> that's why you changed something okay. there. Okay, it makes sense now. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 that's good. It's, it's, it is something happen. It is not only you facing this problem. <laughs> yeah, what is, what is this? So I, I, so you said, when you said you pushed all the files, I was like, oh, just in case if we change the HTML file, I'm gonna recopy it. But then the new one changed the script source. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's okay. No, uh, actually, uh, you see, when, when you visit the console.log, uh, you saw that error message. There. Yeah. The error messages are not pictures or they, they are not there to beat us, they are there to help us. So, yeah. uh, when you see any red error message, Yes, that might be for a threat if they're, they're there to help you guys. So um, they, they are friends, not the enemies. Okay, uh, about the for each. Uh, if you, you guys will want to leave, you are free to leave. Let me just try to sh try that with the for each loop. Actually, my initial intent was not using the for each. But when I see that how it's behaving, I think for each should be a very good candidate in here too. So I'm just going to try in here for each. Oops, for each. Now let me just save. So uh, let me just. I'm just going to remove it. And it is the fresh beginning of the application and just refresh. Okay, zero seats, Avenger Endgame, zero dollar because no seats were selected. I select two seats and I'm going to select uh, Toy Story 4, it's eight dollars. Okay, now I'm going to reload the page. Okay, it's working. So this is what I meant. Uh, uh, in my previous um, call, I use breaking up again. What not does takes an array. In the piece of error. I need in here is not a second for the of an decision. I, I believe I should be looking very funny when I'm breaking up because I, <laughs> <laughs> just a second. So let me just share the screen. What I was saying, uh, what uh, Matt does, it takes an existing array and apply a logic and creates another piece of an array. Uh, but in here, between the line number 65 to 69, uh, I didn't need any, ex any additional array. Uh, what I need is to take a decision, to have that decision to go through the different options which are available in here, select movie, and taking that decision was quite enough for me. So therefore, I convert the approach from map to for each. That, that's what I did and it's, it's still working uh, precisely well. So uh, you remember maybe, uh, I, I think that was our first session with you guys. Uh, I, I was at the stage about uh, which application that uh, check out application. Uh, in the beginning of the uh, session, I told that I'm going to show you a solution, but it is not the solution. That's about it. Uh, whatever we have in here, uh, it is a solution for a challenge, but there might be hundred different ways. So whatever your thought process is, or uh, whatever your uh, structuring your code pattern looks like, you can just alter it anyway. So let me just push this code as well. I like this for each better than the using map. Uh,
So, any further questions or concerns or comments, please feel free to share. No. No. Nope. Um, okay. John, do you have anything to share? Okay. Uh, he was in the library, if I'm not wrong, so I don't want him to have a difficult time. So uh, please make your hands dirty, write the code as much as you can, practice it, and uh, you will be done. Thank you very much, guys. Thank it's you. almost nine. Have a great evening. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you, too. Bye-bye.